Hello. In today's video, we shall learn in detail about growth and development in plants. By the end of this video, you will get a clear understanding about the characteristics of growth, phases of growth, grand period of growth, development in plants, phytohormones, photoperiodism, vernalization, and its significance. Let us start by defining growth and development. Growth can be defined as an irreversible permanent increase in size, shape, volume, and dry weight of an organ or its parts or even of an individual cell. Growth in plants involves three stages. Stage of cell division, stage of cell elongation, and stage of differentiation. Development is a term that includes all changes that an organism goes through during its life cycle, including growth, differentiation, maturation, and senescence. Let us look into the characteristics of growth. In unicellular organisms, growth involves increase in size and number. Cell division leads to reproduction and increase in population. In plants, growth is indefinite or indeterminate in certain parts like stem, root, but limited or determinate growth in leaves, flowers, etc. In higher plants, growth is localized in some regions of the plant called meristem. The meristematic cells have the capacity to divide and produce new cells. Growth is measurable by a variety of parameters like dry weight, area, volume, cell number, etc. Now, we shall study about the phases of growth. There are three phases of growth. Phase of cell division or formative phase. It is the first phase of growth. The meristematic cells undergo mitosis to produce new daughter cells. Phase of cell enlargement or elongation phase. It is the second phase of growth. Cell enlargement takes place by synthesis of protoplasm and large quantities of solutes. This favors endosmosis, increases turgidity, expansion of the thin elastic cell wall in which more cellulose materials are deposited. A large vacuole appears in the center of the cell. Phase of cell maturation and differentiation, otherwise called maturation phase. It is the third and final phase of growth. The elongated cells undergo maturation and differentiation into permanent tissue. Let us learn the meaning of two terms, de-differentiation and re-differentiation. The living differentiated cells regain the capacity to divide and re-divide under certain conditions. This phenomenon is known as de-differentiation. For example, formation of interfascicular cambium and cork cambium. Secondary growth takes place and the cells get differentiated again that is, get re-differentiated. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this lecture, 
please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Next is Grand Period of Growth. The term Grand Period of Growth is given by the German physiologist Sachs in 1873. The time interval from the formative phase to maturation phase is called the Grand Period of Growth. The rate of growth varies from phase to phase. It is slow during the formative phase, becomes maximum during the elongation phase, and then gradually slows down during the maturation phase till it stops. The total time required for the completion of the three phases is the grand period of growth. Now, we will look into the conditions for growth. Plants need light, water, air, warmth and nutrients for their growth. Three main characteristics of light that affect growth are quantity, that is intensity, quality, that is wavelength, and duration or photo period. Water is essential for cell elongation. It also provides the medium for enzymatic activities needed for growth. Water is responsible for turgor pressure in cells needed to maintain cell shape and ensure cell growth. Oxygen helps in releasing metabolic energy essential for growth activities. Nutrients are required for synthesis of protoplasm. Optimum temperature range is essential for normal growth of the plant. Temperature influences photosynthesis, transpiration, respiration, germination and flowering. Next is growth curve. When the rate of growth is plotted against time, a S-shaped curve is obtained known as sigmoid growth curve as shown in the figure. The standard growth curve shows three phases, lag phase or initial growth phase. The rate of growth is slow. It corresponds to the formative phase about which we have already discussed earlier. Log phase or exponential phase, rapid growth takes place. It corresponds to the phase of cell elongation. Steady phase or stationary phase, the growth rate slows down. Cell differentiation takes place. Next, let us study growth rate. The increased growth per unit time is termed as growth rate. The production of new cells can be done either by arithmetic or geometric way. In arithmetic growth, following mitotic cell division, only one daughter cell continues to divide while the other differentiates and matures. This can be observed when the root elongates. On plotting the length of the organ against time, a linear curve is obtained. In geometric growth, the initial growth is slow, lag phase, and it increases rapidly, exponential phase or log phase. The cells retain the ability of cell division. However, with limited nutrient supply, 
the growth slows down, leading to a stationary phase. A typical sigmoid S curve is obtained when we plot the parameter of growth against time. Now, we will learn about development. It is the sum total of growth and differentiation. Development is influenced by both intrinsic factors, that is genetic and hormonal, and extrinsic factors, that is light, water, oxygen, and nutrients. The correct sequence of the developmental process in a plant cell is plasmatic growth followed by differentiation, maturation and senescence respectively. We shall now learn about phytohormones which are plant growth regulators. Phytohormones are organic compounds produced by plants which promote, inhibit or control the growth or influence other physiological functions. The different types of plant growth regulators are auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, ethylene and abscisic acid. Let us learn about auxin. Auxin was first isolated by F. W. Went from tip of coleoptiles of oat seedlings. Auxins are weak organic acids produced naturally by plants having an unsaturated ring structure which are capable of promoting cell elongation during growth of stem and root. Indole-3-acetic acid or IAA is the natural auxin found in all types of plants. Auxins are synthesized in shoot tips and root tips. They are inactivated by light. Auxins are translocated in polar manner, that is, from morphological apex to the base. In stem, it takes place in downward direction, while in roots, it is in the upward direction. Synthetic auxins are NAA, naphthalene acetic acid, 2,4-D, 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid, and many others. Next is functions of auxin. Auxin initiate and promote cell division and also help in cell elongation and cell enlargement. Auxins help in tissue culture. It promotes development of callus or a mass of undifferentiated cells. Auxin promotes root formation. Auxin shows apical dominance. The presence of apical bud inhibits the growth of lateral buds. Presence of auxin prevents abscission of leaves and fruits. Auxin promotes parthenocarpy. Application of synthetic as well as natural auxin to unpollinated pistil produces seedless fruits. Auxins act as weenicides. 2,4-D is used to eliminate dicotyledonous weeds from a monocot crop field. It is a selective weedicide and do not cause harm to the monocot crop plants. Next plant hormone is gibberellin. It was discovered by Kurosawa 
in 1928 in rice plant infected by a fungus gibrella fusicuroi which cause the vacate of foolish seedling disease in plants yabuta and sumiki in 1938 isolated and extracted the disease causing substance in crystalline form and named it as gibberellin gibberellins are weak acidic plant growth hormones capable of causing cell elongation of stem and leaves but internodal length of genetically dwarf plants in particular the sites of their synthesis are apical buds tips of growing roots and young leaves the transport of gibberellin is non polar that is in all directions now we shall learn about the functions of gibberellin gibberellin stimulates cell growth of stem and leaves causing leaf expansion and stem elongation in genetically dwarf varieties gibberellin induces internodal growth and make them appear as normal plants application of gibberellin to rosset plants like cabbage causes elongation of reduced stem known as bolting gibberellin promotes flowering in some long day plants under short day conditions the vernalization or cold treatment requirement of some plants can be overcome if gibberellin is provided natural dormancy of buds tubers and some seeds is overcome by gibberellin gibberellin stimulates the formation of hydrolytic enzymes which solubilize reserve food and is transported to embryo external application of gibberellin induces development of seedless or parthenocarpic fruits cytokinin is another plant hormone they are chemically basic growth hormones which promote cell division in plants the first cytokinin was a synthetic one known as kinetin it was discovered by miller and others in 1955 from degradation product of dna the first natural cytokinin was discovered from unripe maize grains and is known as zeatin cytokinins are synthesized mostly in the root and inside the seeds and developing fruits coconut milk is a rich source of cytokinin we shall look into the functions of cytokinin cytokinins induce cell division along with auxin cytokinins cause cell division in permanent cells presence of both these hormones accelerates mitosis in callus morphogenesis occurs when both cytokinin and auxin are present more auxins than cytokinins initiate rhizogenesis or root formation and relatively less auxins initiate qualogenesis that is shoot formation cytokinins retard aging by mobilization of resource and promoting protein synthesis cytokinins overcome apical dominance and promote the growth of lateral buds like gibberellin 
Cytokinins help to break dormancy of seeds. Cytokinin can replace the photoperiodic requirement of some plants. Cytokinin help the formation of interfascicular cambium during secondary growth of plants. Next plant hormone is ethylene. Ethylene is the gaseous plant hormone, Ginner, in 1934 reported that ethylene synthesized by plants promotes ripening of fruits. Functions of ethylene. Plant organs show accelerated senescence in the presence of ethylene. Application of ethylene helps in breaking the dormancy of seeds and buds of many species and overcomes dormancy of potato tubers. Ethylene stimulates transverse expansion but inhibits longitudinal growth. Ethylene is used for commercial ripening of fruits. Let us now learn about abscisic acid or ABA. ABA is a naturally occurring growth inhibitor which plays an important role in abscission and dormancy and therefore known as dormin. It is called the stress hormone because it is produced during drought and other adverse environmental conditions. It is formed in mature leaves, flowers and fruits and then transported to the site of action. Its transport is non-polar. Functions of abscisic acid. By counteracting the effect of growth promoting hormones, namely auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, Abscisic acid keeps growth under check. ABA induces dormancy in buds towards the approach of winter. ABA causes aging in leaves and promotes abscission of flowers and fruits. During drought and other stresses, abscisic acid is formed in the leaves which causes closure of stomata and checks further loss of water by transpiration. Helps seeds to withstand desiccation and other factors unfavorable for growth. Inhibits seed germination. Having learnt about various plant hormones, let us study photoperiodism. The response of plants to the relative length of light and dark periods with reference to initiation of flowering is called photoperiodism. Garner and Allard in 1920 were the first to study photoperiodism in a variety of tobacco. On the basis of photoperiodic response to flowering, the plants are classified into three main types, long day plants, short day plants, and day neutral plants. Long day plants, they are plants which come to flower under photo periods above a critical length, example, wheat. They are also known as short night plants. Short day plants, they are plants which flower when the photo periods are below a critical length. Example, chrysanthemum. If the length is above the critical photo period, the plants remain vegetative. They are also known as long night plants. Day neutral plants, the plants in which flowering is not affected by length of the day are known as day neutral plants. They are also called 
indeterminate plants or photo neutral plants example sunflower cucumber next is phytochrome phytochrome are a class of photoreceptors that are sensitive to light in the red and far red region of the visible spectrum they are found in plants bacteria and fungi exist in two forms pr and pfr pr absorbs red light and gets converted to pfr while absorption of far red converts pfr to pr pfr is a physiologically active form of the protein exposure to red light is physiological activity in the plant when exposed to far red light pfr converts into inactive pr which inhibits phytochrome activity Kachal Lishchan in 1935 named this hormone responsible for flowering as florigen it is yet to be isolated next we'll try to understand vernalization the cold treatment or chilling treatment of germinating seeds or seedlings to promote early flowering in plants is known as vernalization this technique of vernalization was developed by a russian scientist lisinak in 1928 the suitable temperature range for vernalization is 0 to 5 degrees celsius the stimulus of vernalization is picked up by actively growing meristematic regions like shoot tip and embryo tip mechers in 1939 suggested that vernalization initiates a stimulus for the formation of a hormone called vernalin which induces flowering the chemical could activate the vegetative bud to grow further and get changed into reproductive buds it is yet to be isolated finally we come to significance of vernalization vernalization shortens the vegetative period of a plant and induces early flowering it increases the resistance to cold It is not only applicable to temperate plants but also to tropical plants example wheat it increases the yield of the plants biennial varieties can be converted into annuals winter varieties of crops can be converted into spring varieties vernalization increases the resistance of plant for fungal diseases kernel wrinkles or triticale can be removed by vernalization so today we have learnt in detail about plant growth and development i have some practice questions for you please share your answers in the comment section below you can pause the video and write down the questions if you like thank you so much for your time and participation if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos also if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology please mention that in the comments section below i'll see you there goodbye all the best